Hello everyone and welcome back to Soren Review, and today we're going to be talking about this year's NASCAR Pocono Double Header. We're going to be doing a race review for both Cup Series races. Now before we get started, remember you can use code SOREN72 to get free shipping on all orders $20 or more when you order from Circle B Diecast. More on that at the end of the video. So uh, this is the second year um, that a Pocono Double Header has happened. Um, this is the first year with fans. It looked like it was a very good fan experience. Um, as for the traces, I would say that they were both pretty good. The finishes were, um, very good for both of them. However, the actual racing, uh, wasn't bad. I thought it was pretty good. The restarts were good. Um, I thought that, uh, the fastest cars were on display, um, you know, unlike Nashville, where if you had the fastest car and you you know, had a problem, you couldn't, it took you half the race to get back to the front, you know, I think passing was a little easier than people, um, you know, would have thought or predicted, but however, I think it came out, um, to be two pretty good races, so let's talk about, uh, the first race, so the first race was won by Alex Bowman, and, uh, this was the more wreck-filled race, right, throughout the race, we kind of had, um, some accidents, right, first main accident, we had, uh, it was on lap 15, we did have a debris caution before that, but a uh, main one was Cole Custer, got churned in the, uh, outside wall, I think, by Kislowski, Kislowski did apologize on social media, stage one ended, Newman hit the wall at one point, Corey LaJoy and Anthony Alfredo got into it, Chastain, very aggressively, trying to pass, um, Oh, my mistakes, I'm thinking of race two, but Chastain, who was running up front, did hit the wall, um, and that ended, I think he finished 33rd at the end of the day, um, but I want to talk about this end of the race, because throughout the race, it was kind of, um, Bowman, Larson, Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, William Byron, Blaney, were really the fastest cars, in my opinion, Logano, Kurt Busch, uh, kind of played some pitch strategy, that was the thing, too, about this both races pitch strategy um but at the end of the first race with about 20 laps to go bowman was able to get out in front but kyle larson his much faster teammate was spent a good 10 laps trying to get around him he finally got around him with about four to go but then on the last corner remember larson's trying to go for um four in a row, something that hadn't happened since 2007, he blew a tire going into turn three of the last lap, ended up finishing ninth, and it allowed for Alex Bowman to win the race with Kyle Busch finishing second, so that's Bowman's third win of the year, um, you hate to see it for Kyle Larson, it was definitely a heartbreak for him, uh, however, for us fans watching, it was, um, definitely something fun to watch overall though the racing was good um i think it was uh probably the better of the two but slightly because i want to talk about the second race here the second race was um a fuel mileage race at the end a uh, fuel mileage got the best of it we only had four cautions on like the eight and as for incidents anthony alfredo hit the wall um and eric jones blew a tire along and then towards the end of it Ross Chastain, this is what I was thinking of, Chastain was trying to pass, um, Christopher Bell and Chase Elliott, um, and wrecked himself, and then Bell, he blew a tire, and then Christopher Bell got used up again by Chase Elliott, and both of them blew tires, no cautions for any of them, but towards the end, uh, due to the way cautions came out, people were trying to stretch it out on fuel, some pitted, some didn't, and it ultimately ended with this fuel mileage race of saving it, right? So, it was kind of like you had the people who had easily enough fuel. Brad Kozlowski, Kevin Harvick. Um, uh, who else was there? Uh, Joey Logano, right? Who could save enough. Or not Joey Logano. Um, but you had Brad Kozlowski, Kevin Harvick, Ryan Blaney, right? They had enough fuel to make it to the end. 
um, well, you had people like William Byron, Kurt Busch, Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch, who Kyle Busch throughout most of the race had transmission issues. From my knowledge, he could only keep it in fourth gear and he had no clutch. So that was kind of a craziness for Kyle Busch. Thought his day was over, but uh, was able to be there in the end for fuel mileage. And so what happened was with about... 20 laps to go, you knew fuel mileage was going to play be a big part. And so what happened was William Byron, they were just going to go all the way, pit, and hope that they could uh, change it because he was the leader um, of the cars that were trying to save. And then he decided to save a little later than everybody else. It didn't cost him, but it cost them in the end. Um, William Byron ended up finishing um, not very, not super well, he ended up finishing 12th, um, but you had Brad Kozlowski, who was the leader before all this, and he was closing in, right, he finished third in this, but Kurt Busch, Denny Hamlin tried saving it, they could not, and Kyle Busch, who was able to save because he pitted one lap after everybody else, was the made up the difference Kyle Busch ended up being your winner even though he had the faulty transmission Larson second he was actually able to save enough fuel Kislowski Harvick um, were trying to pressure them they easily could make it on fuel in the fifth place car Bubba Wallace great job to that team it's the first top five and top ten for 2311 racing great job for Bubba Blaney 6th, Bowman 7th, Ryan Priest 8th, great job for that team as well. Redick Logano, fill out the rest of your top 10. But overall, I thought it was very exciting. Two very stellar races. Um, I think Pocono is very, uh, probably one of the best tracks for a doubleheader. Um, and, you know, even with stages, uh, fuel mileage is still going to come into play at Pocono. So great race, great race for both of them. Um, we're going to Road America, so we'll see how that goes. Remember, you can use code SORIN72 to get free shipping on all orders from Circle B Diecast that are $20 or more. SORIN72 is the code. It's a great deal. Save 5 to $10 on shipping. Some new 2021 Diecast coming out if you're uh, wanting to get some of those new paint schemes. Also, follow me on Twitter if you want, at ReviewSORIN. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Goodbye.